Hey, in this video, I'm going to talk about catching and striking a moving object. Um, so there's three phases that are involved in catching an object. So first is moving the arm and hand towards the oncoming object. Second is shaping the hand to catch the object before contact has been made. And then finally, once there's contact, the fingers must grasp the object. Um, so vision, visual feedback is really important to get the spatial and temporal characteristics um, of the object that are coming that is coming towards you so that you can set the arms, hands, and fingers. And that has to be done before the ball arrives. You can't wait until the ball makes contact to be able to shape and, and move the arm and the hands, otherwise it's too late. Um, once you've made contact and you're actually touching the object, then the proprioceptive and tactile feedback are important to help make adjustments to grasp so that you don't drop the ball or whatever it is that, that you're catching. Um, central and peripheral vision are both critical to catching an object. So we use central and peripheral vision during different parts of the, the movement or in different parts of the flight of the object to see the object and to see your hands in peripheral vision before you catch the object. Um, so the role of vision uh, when we're catching an object. Um, so constant visual contact is necessary during two parts of the flight of the object. So the first is the initial part of the flight. So when the ball is thrown, thrown or whatever the object is. So when the object first begins to move, um, we need to look at that person throwing the ball or whatever it is. Um, and we obtain information about the direction and distance of the flight of the object based on its initial part of the flight. Now we may or may not get to witness that, depends on the situation we're in. Um, but we will be more successful at catching the object if we are able to maintain visual contact when that happens. Um, and then second, important constant visual contact would be the time just right before catching. Um, so when we're obtaining time to contact information, so tau, where we're seeing the change in size of the image on the retina as it's coming toward us, that's giving us information about time to contact. Um, and so we need to obtain that visual information so that we can prepare our final spatial positioning of the hands and fingers and prepare for grasp. Um, we do not need to maintain constant visual contact while the object is in flight in between. So after the object has been thrown and before it's time to actually prepare to catch it, that whole time in between, we do not need to, meet, we do not need to maintain visual contact and we can get the information we need from just occasional glimpses to, to see the object that's in flight. Um, tau is involved in estimating time to contact, but it's not, um, it doesn't explain everything. It's not entirely all we need our vision for in the role of catching or in the action of catching. Um, experience is also an important factor in successful catching. Um, and that's whether we can see hands or not. So when we're catching, we are a lot more successful when we can see our hands, even if it's just in our peripheral vision, but if we could see our hands, we are far more successful at catching an object. Um, now we can make up for that to some extent with experience. So the more experience and practice we have, the less critical it is that we're able to see our hands to successfully catch the ball or whatever the object is. Um, but a novice, somebody who doesn't have experience, is going to perform significantly better if they can see their hands while catching. Um, and then with age and experience, um, then we're able to catch better and better without seeing our hands. Now, I brought up age here because with age, we get better and better at relying on peripheral vision. Just in general, as humans, we use more and more peripheral vision and we get better at trusting and relying on our peripheral vision with age. Um, so if we can, if we're getting better and better at using peripheral vision, that means that we're getting better at seeing our hands in our peripheral vision and being able to catch the object with peripheral vision compared to central vision uh, where we're focusing directly on the hands. Um, so for practical purposes, um, somebody who is a beginner or a novice or less skilled at catching, um, if they're practicing and trying to improve their skill, then they should practice in situations where they can see their hands while doing the catching. 
All right, so then making contact with a flying object, a great example is baseball batting. Um, so there are all sorts of studies about uh, batting at different levels. So um, professional players actually track the ball. So they're tracking visually. Um, they're tracking the ball longer up until about five and a half feet in front of the plate than college players who track and then kind of lose track around nine feet in front of the plate. Um, and that could be a significant effect um, in terms of their accuracy and skill at batting. Uh, batters tend to synchronize the start of the step forward with the release of the ball from the pitcher's hand. That doesn't mean they happen at the same time. It means that they're, they're using that as their cue to take their step forward. So they're synchronizing depending on the speed of the pitch. Now, interestingly, in baseball batting, the duration of the swing is consistent. So basically, each batter takes whatever time it is to swing and that swing time is going to be consistent from trial to trial. Um, and so what's different is when they initiate the swing. Um, so initiation of the swing is adjusted depending on the speed of the pitch. So basically we're using tau again, we're using time to contact. The, the batter is estimating how much time they have to contact based on um, the characteristics that they're detecting when the ball is leaving the pitcher. Um, so when the pitcher is throwing the ball, the batter is using tau. They're estimating time to contact. So basically they're estimating the speed of the pitch and then they're initiating their swing. They're taping, taking that first step forward um, at different times, depending on how fast they determine the, the pitch to be traveling. Um, so the duration of the swing is going to be the same, but they'll they'll initiate that step forward a little bit later if the pitch is slower and they'll start a little bit earlier if it's a fast pitch. Interestingly, table tennis operates a little bit differently. So it's another example of a skill where we are making contact with a moving object. Um, so what's interesting here is that swing time is different. So like in baseball, it's very static. You know, it's the same from trial to trial. In table tennis, the speed of the swing is going to change to compensate depending on time to contact. Um, so vision triggers the initiation of the swing and provides information that the player uses to compensate, especially with speed of the swing. So depending on when that swing is initiated and the time to contact, so tau, so we're seeing the image of the ball change in size as it's coming toward us. So depending on when we initiate the movement and how fast it's coming at us, we will adjust the speed of the swing to make up for the difference. So in baseball, we change the initiation to be more accurate, like the duration will take the same, but we'll change when we initiate the movement. In table tennis, we'll initiate the movement and change the speed, so therefore the duration of the movement to make up for the accuracy. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.